All right, everyone, it's Dan back here with another video, continuing with my uh, Soldier Stories series of videos. I'm going to read today from a, a book called Letters from Home, uh, Letters Home from World War II, and I uh, figured I would do an Air War video today, so it's going to be accounts of Private Vern Manis, who served in the Army Air Forces in Europe. Um, so I'll start out reading here, and then we'll go over some of the artifacts on the table. So it says, One of the most difficult adjustments to wartime military life was learning to cope with homesickness. I'm glad Dad's proud of me, and I'll try to live up to his expectations, a young sailor wrote. He wrote his parents in 1944. Write every day if possible. A youthful paratrooper, like so many servicemen, tried but failed to hide the hurt that came with the distance. This is a pretty nice camp. I like it a lot, he wrote, but it's a long way from home. Among the seemingly endless rows of Quonset huts that were fixtures of basic training at airfields, in the dreary camp of English mornings, in the cramped quarters aboard ships, in the jungles of Pacific islands, in the foxholes of Italy, France, and Belgium, wherever Americans in uniform had at fleeting moments to remember, the faces of family life were there before them. Especially hard on the heart was the separation of those in love. It's an easy laugh, a knowing look, a favorite meal, a soft caress, all expressions of affection that seemed so familiar, stable, were now were memories only. I survive on memories, penned Lieutenant William Johnson from France, a husband and a father, to his wife back in the States. I got the same way in England for a time and couldn't finish a meal. I'm just terribly lonesome for you and those cute little guys. The, wife, the war put life on hold for millions of Americans. Fathers had always been home to toss a football, read a bedtime story, share a word of encouragement, administer discipline, and fix what was broken. Now we're gone. Sons who had posed for prom photos just months earlier now mailed home snapshots of themselves in combat zones. Daughters just yesterday had been performing school in school plays and giggling about boys now picking their bloody wounds and typed letters to next of kin. Plans for a new car, a new home, an education, long-awaited vacation, and, and a parade of, of other dreams were postponed until when the war is over and I'm back. Although a flurry of wartime marriages would eventually launch a baby boom, marriage plans were often casualties of war. I'm sitting here on my bunk thinking of you, my darling, wrote Private Vernard Vern Manis Jr. to his fiancée back home in Michigan. An 18-year-old draftee in the Army Air Forces, Manis planned to marry Helen Wagger, his high school sweetheart. But the war had intervened and as he prepared to ship out for the European th theater, he struggled to decide what would be best for his intended bride. We were listening to Jack Benny on the radio and trying to write letters, he wrote, to, at, from Amarillo Airfield in Texas. Darling, I count the minutes between one mail call to another, just waiting for a letter from you, my wonderful darling. Soon his fiance and her aunt would arrive after a cross-country trip to say goodbye before he shipped out. It won't be long until I can hold you close to me again, he wrote. That is, if you don't mind. I hope not. I've been waiting a long time for the minute that I could look into your pretty blue eyes again and kiss you. With a reunion pending, with a reunion pending, Manus realized he had to either postpone a quick wedding or, or propose a quick wedding or po postpone marriage. Finally decided it would be easier on the woman he loved to put marriage on hold until the war's end, if he survived. My darling, he finally wrote, I'm so very lonely without you. I know inside that you want to be married, but this war is a bad thing that has to be settled at the first opportunity. Like millions of other Americans in World War II, Private Manon was forced to make painfully difficult decisions. And here's a note and a picture of Private Manus. And it says, Private Bird Manus would pull a full tour of 
combat duty in the Army Air Force in the skies over Germany, promoted to sergeant, he would survive and return home at the war's end as a decorated combat veteran. And another note, it says, in June of 43, days before he shipped out for Europe, Private Manus changed his mind and married his fiancée. Reunited after the war, Vern and Helen Manus raised six children and enjoyed 38 years of marriage. Here's an actual copy of his letter. His penmanship is a little hard for me to read, but that's an actual copy. And you can see his Army Air Corps patch there. And over here, while this isn't his personal uniform, it's very similar to what he would have worn. It's almost identical, just didn't belong to him. This belonged to a corporal in the Army Air Forces in Europe. We have another... Uh, Army Air Corps. This is a uh, staff sergeant's uniform. And another one up here. Down below we have a flak helmet. This would have been worn by bomber crews. Um, designed to protect obviously one's head from exploding anti-aircraft shells. Uh, as the planes themselves were pretty thin and not armored, uh, they would have worn this helmet as well as a flak vest. Uh, it has the flaps that are coned out so that it would fit over the headset, the radio headset, the pilots and crewmen wore. Uh, what we have here is a pair of heated boot liners with the Army Air Corps logo. Uh, planes at this time were not pressurized, and flying at 20,000 feet is extremely cold. I mean, frostbite could be instantaneous. So they wore very thick uh, weather clothing uh, that was thickly lined and had these type of insulated boots that would heat off of a battery so you can see the electrical connectors there and there's the uh, label inside if it wants to focus so shoe insert flying electric type q1 over here we have a uh, poster advertisement from uh, Chevrolet uh, they made, during the war, made anything from trucks to rifles to also airplanes. Uh, bombers like this were made in Detroit as well as in Cleveland, Ohio. If you're from Ohio and ever been to the IX Center, you may not have known that during the war they manufactured bombers there. And the plant belonged to General Motors. Over here, we have a Life magazine talking about women pilots. It wasn't just men who flew. Uh, during the war, women uh, pilots would fly planes from the factories uh, to the airfields where they would eventually then go overseas. And I always liked that. But this particular Life magazine makes a great photo. Here we have a flying helmet, Summers type. It does still have some lining for the ears, but it's uh, the thin material, not the thick uh, type material. And this would have been probably more and more by uh, fighter pilots flying at lower altitudes than um, high altitude uh, pilots. There we have a string of 50 caliber uh, machine gun shells. This is the type of uh, ammunition that would have been used on either the fighter pilot or fighter aircraft guns or the various machine guns on the B-17s and B-24s flying over Europe. To the right, we have a, a Corsair aircraft, F-40 Corsair. Uh, these served primarily in the Pacific. And these were actually manufactured, uh, one of the places, by Goodyear in Akron, Ohio, at the uh, Blimp Dome. Anyone from Akron that's driven past uh, has, you know, seen that, known that blimps are, were stored there, but they also, in the war, manufactured the F-4U. Um, these primarily flew off of aircraft carriers, but also flew off of ground fields in the Pacific Islands, and up above here, we have a Marine Corps World War II aviators uniform, so if you've ever watched the show Black Sheep Squadron, um, you know, this is what a Marine Corps flying officer would have worn, and you can see his wings there. So that pretty much concludes this short video. But I hope you enjoyed, and I'll hopefully be reading some other videos or some other letters from this book. Um, 
for future videos. So questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the box below. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe.